This is not a tale of awakening or of sleep, of pleasure or of pain, or even of mixed tenses, but simply of one man, Melvin, and Melvin's discontent. Melvin. Melvin! Melvin, how long have you been living here? Ever since Mom went away, Uncle Roy, you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but, but how long? About 15 years, I guess. And in all that time, how much rent have I charged you? Well, nothing. Nothing? Really? Nothing? Melvin, how, how much do you suppose you've cost me? What? You know, food, lodging, lights, parakeets. But I don't own a parakeet, Uncle Roy. Now's a fine time to tell me this is just the sort of thing I'm talking about, Melvin. Well, just, just what are you talking about, sir? Do you know how many boxes of parakeet seed I've purchased in the last six months alone? And now you tell me you don't own a parakeet? I don't have an elephant either, Uncle Roy. But what? Just... What do you mean, no elephant? Davis, Davis, quick get on the phone to Nairobi, can you? Why do you think I'm letting you stay here? Johnson, call that breeding program guy at the zoo. Cancel everything. And you, you little weasel, you've cost me thousands, maybe millions. That's it. No more. No mas, baby. Out. Out. Out of my house. <laughs> get out of my house. You lowlife. <laughs> Ross, get out. Out. I used to in my work. What kind of work is that? You have only got two dollars, okay, mister? Okay, my name is Mort. I'm a harvester. You cut weeds? I prefer to say that I keep things tidy. Say, you look hungry. Would you like to join me for lunch? I really don't have the money, mister, but thanks. Thanks a lot, mister. Mort. Okay, Mort. Thanks a lot. Go on, no coming. Go on, mainly. Need a place to crack? Mm, I don't know. Thanks a lot, Mort. It's okay. I know what hard times are. Let me know. Good night. Good night. So he threw me out. That's weird. What are you gonna do now? I really don't know, Mark. 
I do a lot of business with an employment agency. I, I know some of the people there. Uh, perhaps they'd be willing to help. Uh, let me give a call. I'll be right back. Mr. Tab Hart, have a seat. Well, Mr. Tab Hart, I've been looking over your application. Is, is your age correct on this? Yes. And you have absolutely no work experience? Ma'am, you have to understand I've been living with my Uncle Roy through these tender and formative years. But you're 37 years old, sir. And besides, our agency does not consider living with a relative to be a job. Never lived with Uncle Roy. Excuse me? Nothing. Mm. Well, dear Mr. Tabhart, looks like this gentleman needs some help. Let's see if we can accommodate him. Employment service? Good. Well, you look like a fairly intelligent young man. What's your name? Uh, Melvin, sir. Melvin Tabhart. Well, come here, Mr. Tabhart. I'm happy to meet you. Yeah. Oh, you God. Let me tell you what I have for you. Come on, Mr. Tabhart. We just have a couple of things we need to figure out. Tell me something, Mr. Tabhart. Are you a single man? Yes, sir. Spoken like a real man. You know, I'm a single man myself, Melvin, but not by choice. I got a burden. A burden I can never lay down. What's that, sir? You know what hell is, Melvin? Hell is having a daddy with the last name of Cesspuch who will not change it. Do you know what name you can put in front of Cesspuch that sounds decent? No. That's right. Nine. Did you see that sign when you, you come up here, a sign of above the bottom of the shop? Yeah. What that say? Uh, it says... Happy uh, Sex Pooch Car Shop. That's Sex Pooch, son. But tell me, would you be happy if your last name was Sex Pooch? No, I, God, it's a, it's, a burden, it's a burden, all right. You know, the only thing that gets me out of a sack anymore in the morning is certainly the pain I'll suffer from that little truism. It's like this, son, if you're going to work for me, for business purposes only, you will have to assume the last name of Cesspuge. <laughs> now, you go home, and you can be anybody you want to be. <laughs> but when you're here, you will be referred to as Salesman Melvin Cesspuge. <laughs> God.
Mr. Tab Tab, this does not seem to have gone very well, has it? That's uh, Tab Hart, ma'am. And no, I didn't. It was weird. All he wanted to do was talk about his name, then how he wanted to change my name to his. It made me feel, well, well, like a woman or something. A woman. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tab Hart, for putting women ahead of something. Well, you game for a little adventure, Mr. Tab Hart? Sure, what have I got to lose? Well, let's try this one. No experience necessary. Hello, hello, little meat lover. You have certainly come to the right place. We have just received a shipment of pre-cooked T-bones from the finest fashion houses in Europe. For instance, the Givenchy is very hot. Um, I'm here from the employment agency. Well, no order is too large or too small for me, Donya Olympia, purveyor of fine fashion meats. have topmost satisfaction on bulk orders of porterhouse, round steak, and veal. Our price is favorably compared with the New York Garment District. Um, I'm, well, I'm here about the job, the, the meat cutter. Christo and Dio. Crudity personified. Here, we do not cut the meat. We tease, we flirt, we seduce the steaks to perfection. Huh? Well, you will not be given a knife, you troll. You will be given an expense account at the finest hotels and the playgrounds of the continent. You and a selected side of beef or mutton will be flown to the getaway of your choice, where you will... Wait, wait. You don't actually expect me to date a slab of beef, do you? We do not encourage the staff to become too familiar. Just show it a good time. I never saw anything like it, Mort. This woman exhibited an unnatural veneration for beef and pork byproducts. I'm Kenny. I think they actually wanted me to date one of their round steaks. <laughs> explosive, explosive relationship? They were planning a weekend for me and Monte Carlo with a prime rib. Yeah, take it, my dog. Hey, Mort, listen to this. Local auto dealer GB Sexpooch died suddenly at his place of business Tuesday afternoon. Mr. Sexpooch was found in the back room of his auto business by an employee who was locking up. It's been reported that Mr. Sexpooch, having no surviving relatives, has left his entire business to a young transient woman named Flinda Squat. Ms. Squat would not respond to inquiries, etc., etc. Score one for Mr. C. God, Mort, that's the guy I went to see about the interview the other day. He seems so, so... Unwilling to die? Yeah. Life's like a light switch, you know, Bowman? It's, you switch it on, you switch it off. You pay your money, you lose your chance. How about some more, Cavatelli? Nah! So you're Smoot, eh? Yes, sir. Andy Smoot. You can just call me Andy. Yeah, well, Smoot, you're evicted. Now take your third world ass and get it out of here. Nah! I'm not even going to bother to read this. Hey, Cockrum, the lights are on. You better scurry away before I decide to step on you. Come on, chap. Got a full belly and shiny shoes? You got a full afternoon ahead of you.
his face turn white like I've never seen his face. I remember I kept saying to whoever. You're going to look terrific, and you're going to have. Mr. Roy Grinds, founder and sole owner of Grind Corp and Grind Corp Internex, died suddenly of a heart attack today. Mr. Grinds was at his home in Flomont at the time. According to his secretary, Mr. Davis, he had just concluded some business with two clients when Mr. Davis heard a crash in the study. It was then that he found Mr. Grinds slumped over his desk. Mr. Davis expressed regrets that, in his words, the old man had to die alone. Rod Crunch signing off for PUK Channel 7. I, I see that your employment at Designer Meats has been terminated. Yes, ma'am. Well, I can explain that. I just went... Mr. Uh, Tap Tap, listening is not my department. Thank God. My job is to remove you permanently from the decor of this establishment, and that I will do, Mr. Tube Sock. That I will do. That kills me. Try again. What do you got? Paul, without a doubt, these lads possess a lyrical quality far above the matting crowd. Yeah, well, it's a real tough club to break. Do I mean it? These guys are a, a rocking little combo. Well, I guess we'll see. for a half a gallon of milk and never came back. Hell. Ever since then, it's like I've been standing at the front door of life waiting for the postman, but he never comes. Then in the evening comes the man from the Overnight Express. Hey, you want a beer? No, uh, I'm, I'm working tonight. Hey, Mort, you think I could ever learn to be a harvester like you? Sorry, Melvin. This is a closed shop. Just my luck. It's the story of my life. Each day runs into the next like one long, tepid drink of water. Just don't know what I'm going to do. There's always tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow's just one more uneventful disappointment. No. No, Melvin. Tomorrow will be a beautiful day. Beautiful day.